Hey everybody and welcome to today's model building workshop, which we're going to just do something really simple. Uh, we're just going to work on some infantry in 135th scale. And today I have, well, this is an old kit as you can probably tell by the artwork on the box. Uh, this is, well, Chasseurs Alpine, which basically is French for French mountain troops. Uh, this is a kit from Heller Model Company in 135th scale and Heller is a French model manufacturer. They're still around, they still make this kit. This just happens to be a very old packaging of it and uh, like a lot of the model kits I tended to get and use for these videos, I tend to find these at uh, hobby shows at the sale table because old stuff like this tends to be really inexpensive at a lot of the shows. Fortunately with the coronavirus I don't think we'll be seeing any shows for a while, but anyway, you can still find this stuff online pretty easily. Uh, and there's a lot of other model figure kits out there, so I'm just using this one as an example today, that's all. So, like many model kits, the instruction sheet just has a bunch of blow up video, video, yeah, right, uh, diagrams. The text is all in French, not terribly helpful if you don't speak French or read in French. I do a little bit, so I can do a little bit of this, um, but there's really not a whole lot you need to read here anyway. The only thing that might be helpful would be, they do have a lot of paint number, they have a paint number thing system here, and there is a little diagram, well, thing here that explains what those colors are in French but you may need to Google Translate that, or even simpler, you just go by the box. So, French Mountain Troops of World War II, and World War I actually, wore this uniform. So this is kind of good for both, both World Wars. And it's a blue uniform with, uh, you know, leather and some tan canvas uh, bags and so forth, and a metal lunch tin. So it's a pretty straightforward painting on these guys. Basically all you really need is some blue paint like this one. This is a Tamiya acrylic paint. A little on the pricey side, but it's great paint and it will last a while and you can clean this up with water if you need to. So a couple of got one here in a tan color for the bags. But you can also use things like this, you know, craft paint. Uh, It'll do the job. It's not as good as the model paint, but it's certainly an inexpensive option. Anyhow, let's have a look at the kit. So in this kit, you get a bag, and we have three soldiers in here. And I'm just gonna do a couple rather quickly here, just so you get the idea what this is. So as you can see, there's a couple of officers, one standing, one sitting on a box looking at a map, and the other one in full combat gear. Okay, so, and your map is actually on the instruction sheet. You just cut that out and fold it up, and there you go. You can make a photocopy if you want in case you make a mistake. So anyhow, I'm just going to demonstrate this today because model figure kits like these are generally pretty kid-friendly, and we've certainly had a lot of success working with figure kits like this at the library. Kids love doing these. Uh, the Heller kit is a little bit more work, only that you've got to put like the front and the back of the, uh, the torso together, the head's a separate piece, and the legs are separate pieces. But even so, I found that even some of the younger kids, they, it's not that complicated to do, and I'll demonstrate how this works. So I got some wire cutters here. I picked these up at uh, was it Harbor Freight? I think it's called in a bin. They were pretty inexpensive. You can certainly use an exacto knife, which is what I would do at home for the most part, but not very kid friendly. I mean, you could cut your finger on this, though you kind of have to purposely cut your finger with this. An exacto blade. Well, I've seen accidents with that. Not with kids, not at the library, but in jobs I've had. You know, I used to work at uh, printing companies and stuff, and we were cutting boxes open with X-Acto knives, and sometimes 
you know. So I don't recommend exacto knives with kids by any stretch, and even adults need to pay attention when they're using them. So, okay. What I do with figures, it's good to start getting like the legs together. And I put a little bit of glue on there. Didn't mean to scare you with my talk about exacto knives. <laughs> yeah, we don't use them at the library. I don't use them with kids at all, but you need to pay attention when you're using an exacto knife. Anyway, so here we go here. And uh, so you just put these parts together here. Of course, these don't want to line up for me today. There it is. You'll see it line up. Okay, so now that you have the legs together like this, this is going to give you a base where you can put the torso on. So it's good to kind of work your way up, actually. At least that's what I found. So now I'm going to do the front and the back of the torso. Cut that off. And I'm going to use my trusty emery board because I don't want the bumps to be there. All right, that's supposed to be there. This is the bump I don't want because this bump is going to hinder me from putting the arms on. And I want to make sure that that's out of there. And usually, with a couple of quick run throughs with the emery stick here, it takes the bump right off. Lower on the belt there. Okay. Came right off. See? That's it. So if you're working with kids, you may need to help them with that, but I find that they usually get the idea pretty quickly once you demonstrate it. And we're going to put this torso together here. Line that up good. Yeah. <laughs> One thing that's fun about this particular kit, and, and there's certainly lots of options out there on the market for all kinds of different figure sets, but the fact that these guys had those sharp blue uniforms, it, uh, it's kind of a nice feature because it's rather unusual compared to the standard green and gray uniforms you see. Blue is kind of like, ooh, blue. All right, so we got the. I don't know if I can even really show you that. So the torso is together. Just gonna make sure it lines up well. I know it's hard to see that. And now we've got the bottom, and I'm gonna test fit this quickly. Make sure there's nothing that's gonna stop this. And you're just gonna put that. I'm gonna find a little spot off the back here. Make sure they're nice. to put this on. Okay, so now put the cement on the top of the, that. Just gonna sit this on there. Come on, you want to work. Yes, you do. Just give me a little bit of issues here. Come on. Oop. This glue gives you some time to work with it, and then it kind of sets. All right, this is giving me a little bit of an issue here. Why? All right, nope. Now there it is. Slight gap here and there. Oops. Could be a little bit better. But it's not bad. And of course, he's going to have gear on, which is going to hide some of these little spots that are showing up. Okay, so now you have that much together, okay?
So let me check the instructions again because I'm going this officer here standing with the with the pistol on his hip. I'm going to put the pistol on now before I put the arms on. So then, and in some cases I would paint some of the stuff in advance, but in this for this demonstration I'm not going to do any of that. I'm trying to give you an idea how you would do this with your children because this is n not bad for kids at all, as I said earlier. Okay, so he's got a pistol that's sitting on his right hip in the holster, so it's kind of up in front here. A little blob of glue there. And try to plunk it on there. I'm not positive what the pistol would be in here, what the French handguns look like at that time. Something worth looking up. I'm sure some of you out there probably know and could probably fill me in. Uh, so there's the holster that's on. See? Okay. Now I'm going to try to put the arms on. And in some cases, I would paint some of this first, like I said, because it might be hard to get in there afterwards and get the inside of the, you know, like this part of the arm. But hey, we're just having fun today. And like I said, I want to get you the idea of just how to build a simple model figure. Because this is a fun activity to do, and your kids will probably enjoy this. And when they're done, you can have a little army you can work with. And you can set up different kind of scenes and do little battle stuff with them. If you're careful, yeah. As a kid, I found that great, great fun because I had, you know, a whole bunch of soldier armies, sets and figures, and had different uh, na uh, different nations involved. And so, like the French were here, the British were there, the Germans are there, the Americans are over there. You could, you know, you can have fun with that. Okay, so. I'm going to put a little bit of glue on this spot here. And I'm going to get this arm. Oops. Yes, it gets a little tricky because everything's kind of loose here. I need to adjust that pistol. further over. I'm going to slide the pistol a little bit because I think he's supposed to be resting his hand on it. So. Alright, that's not bad. You can adjust this however you want. Alright, so there's one arm. Like I said, painting might be a little tricky afterwards, but we'll get in there with a brush. We'll figure it out. And the other arm is just on the side here. Oh, it fits really nice. It does. All right, so we're at that stage now. Not too bad, right? I'm going to try putting the head on. Like I said, in some cases I would paint that in advance before putting it on there, but let's just try it out. Not every manufacturer has the head separate like this one. It depends on the company. A bit of a mold scene on it. It's kind of fun that they have these interesting mustaches. So you could certainly do World War I period with these guys because they, they do have the, <laughs> the, the fun mustache there. It's really up to you how you want to do it because th there was 
not a lot of change in uniform and equipment with the French Mountain Troops for both World Wars. So the regular French infantry, there were some changes in uniform. Uh, the standard infantry in World War One. Well, they started the World War One with a dark blue jacket and red pants and a blue hat. That was the standard army, and they found that that just wasn't effective or not not a good idea. And then they switched to a light blue, pretty much the color here. The infantry would have been a light horizon blue, as they called it, and uh, for the rest of World War One. But by World War Two, you know the the regular infantry was then using kind of a, a khaki, uh, an olive color. So they switched to that for during World War II. But the mountain troops, because it was an elite unit, stayed with their blue, you know, dark blue uniform because it was just like a symbol of prestige. You know, this is like you had to really work hard to qualify to work in the mountain division. So you got to wear that. And you've got the blue beret, which is here. I'm going to leave the blue beret off right now, but it just kind of goes on very simply, as you can see here. But that'll leave off because I want to paint that head before, you know, I won't paint the top of the head, but I want to paint that before I put the blue cap on them. But I will put this bag, and this is usually, okay showed you earlier. So you, they're usually painted in a color kind of like that. Could be green too, I guess, but it seems like it's a, uh, a tannish color. All right, so let's get the bag. So the strap actually comes down the back there, so you can see where the strap is. And I'm going to try to line this up in the back here because the straps come down. And I'm hoping that this is going to cover, there's a slight gap there. Yeah, oops, helps if I have it up, don't have it upside down. <laughs> He's gonna lose all of his gear with an upside down bag. His lunch will be all over the place. Okay, so you can line the straps up on the bag. I guess I could have turned that a little bit, but hey, now that works. So now you've got his backpack there. He's got his pistol. All right, so this guy is pretty much done. We just need the hat later, but I'll want to paint that face and then paint the cap blue and then put it on at the very end. So they also give you a stand that you can glue and put him on, which I'll hold off on that, but it goes like this, so then you can pose him however you want to. So like I said, these are very kid friendly. i check on time and see if I have time to do anything else today. Yeah, I can get the thing to work. <laughs> and then we'll see where we are. Yeah, so I'll try another one. But I don't want to tie you up too long. So I'm gonna do the, the seated officer. There's a box here. It's not the best detailed box, but you know, it works. It gives us something to sit on. So in this case, basically the same process. I'll get the legs here. So if you're looking for something to do with your kids, model figures are pretty good. And there's a lot of options out there. Because I've also discovered uh, recently some things that would be might be fun for girls too. I, I discovered a whole set of uh, different fashion models, and uh, they're from Japan, so the Japanese models, but they have different for different decades, you know, like from the fashions of the '70s, fashions of the '80s, fashions of the '90s, up through. It's something different. But again, it's uh, from Japan. So the Japanese fashion models. 
but you'll find there's a lot of different uh, types of things out there that you can work with. Although a lot of model building does tend to have a military theme to it, to be fair. World War II is the most popular subject because it was, you know, it was a long war and a lot of countries were involved and there's a lot of different types of vehicles, tanks, aircraft. There's a lot of variety of things and they fought in pretty much every corner of the planet in every kind of condition from you know, the snow to jungles to the desert. So that's probably why it's a popular topic. All right, so we have the bottom of the, t of the torso, uh, the body <laughs> is together there. And I'm gonna get the torso or the trunk or whatever we wanna call it. Get that here. And if you wanted to be different, if you didn't want to do them in blue, and you could do them in the green olive color of the French army. But there are other countries that used this similar uniform too, like Romania did, and they used the tan, uh, tan uniform, so you could do that if you wanted something different. So there are, there's always options. And you, of course, you can use your imagination to do whatever you want with them, you know. And uh, countries like Serbia had a similar, you know, Yugoslavia had a similar type of uniform, which I think was like a gray color. So anyhow, lots of possibilities. All right, I think I got that together. So there we go. And now I'm going to set that on this. Let me see a little bit of a bump here. I'll make sure that's clear without bending this too much. Come on. Depends how fussy you want to get because there's mold seams on these models from the when the plastic was put in the mold. Sometimes I like to get those lines and bumps out of the way, but you certainly don't need to be that fussy. All right, that fits nicely. So getting there, right? It's only been a few minutes. Granted, other models like tanks and airplanes and cars take oh, one, take a whole lot longer. So, but these are kind of nice, and you can get other boxes of figures. I know Tamiya, which is a really great Japanese company, which I've talked about many times on this model building workshop program. You know, they have box sets where you can get like eight soldiers in them, and they're reasonably priced, and they're not difficult to put together. So there's options. Heller tends to like sets of three, although they also have bigger sets where they have sets of say like uh, six. And they also have different diorama sets available where you can get a whole, there'd be a base, a scene. And uh, there might be, for example, there's one with the desert where you have a, a desert scene, right? Little Like a little well and a bit of a ruined building, and you have a kit of a couple of uh, mules with the soldiers packing stuff onto the mules. And there's a couple of soldiers, and then there's a, a camel and a camel rider. It's kind of a neat set. Don't know how cheap that is now, <laughs> but that's, for example, there's different things like that out there. I think Airfix also sells buildings of different types of I think they sell a desert outpost and a jungle outpost. All right, I did. All right, I'm gonna adjust this just right. So I have to do some work to make sure this guy's arm will fit on him because I got it in a way that it 
Yeah, it's good to move fast with this stuff because you need to get you need to get it so that his arm hits hits his knee just right. See what I mean? So you gotta get that with the glue is still soft enough that you can line up his arm with the knee. Otherwise, it's not going to fit right. So that's challenging. And I believe he has, yeah, he has ammo pouches. Well, does it indicate? Yeah, there's one. Very small. I'm going to put that ammo pouch on now because I may not be able to get in there after the other arm is on there. Try to see those little rifles. There's one there. I guess there's only the one rifle on this kit. Yeah, all right, I'm not sure why he has an animal pouch without a rifle, but hey, that's the deal. <laughs> it's kind of odd. I'm surprised they didn't give him a pistol or something else. Yeah, well, yeah, there's one rifle for the guy that's got all the combat gear on. What is suggesting that go on the right side? Uh, that might be wishful thinking, but I don't know how necessary it is to get this ammo pouch on there. That's what tweezers are going to come in. Oh, I'm going to just sit that on his belt like so. And then I'm going to get the other arm. And so go on that side. <laughs> so as you can see, I'm working in the library again today. Not my normal workshop. So I'm still trying to get used to working in this space. So you're supposed to fold and fit the map into his hands later, but you can do whatever you want with this figure. Put whatever you, you know, whatever you want there. You can just be talking. And I'll get the head, and again, I'm going to leave the hat off till later. But these berets, I built this before. These berets are pretty easy. You just plump it on and you can angle it however you want. They're very forgiving. Oops. Heads are going to roll. <laughs> so as you've seen, this doesn't take a whole lot of tools to, to do this. It's just uh, the glue, the wire cutters, and, and the emery board, really. I, I used the tweezers once. I don't know about the last guy. The last guy has a lot of gear, but I don't think it's going to be complicated to do that. It just means there's a lot of stuff that's going to go on his back. I think with that case, it's just I'm not going to do that today for lack of time. Actually, this guy looks good without the hat. Maybe I'll leave it without it. All right, so here's our hero. <laughs> and he's just going to sit, which I'll take it off so you can see. He's just going to sit on this box, which I guess a quarter of that's just painted in a dark wooden color, a bois français, if you do the French. That's not the best detail box, but anyhow, it doesn't really matter because once you sit them on there, see? And that's it. So he sits on the box like that. And he's got his, the other officer will be standing next to him, which I can't show you because of the angle. Well, maybe I can try to angle the camera so you can see them. Eh, not well. <laughs> but, <laughs> but they do stand pretty well even without the stand, which is kind of nice. 
And I'll show you the last guy, which we're not going to work on today. I think we're running low on time here, but so there's a lot of pieces to this guy, but you know, not, not too much to worry about really. You said again, you had the two legs. You'd start there. You put the torso halves together. You put that on, and then you got the arms. And in that case, if you look at the diagram here, it's just a matter of getting this um, cloth, I guess tent or blanket roll, whatever that is. You're just going to situate that over the backpack, and that all goes on the on its back, obviously. And then you've got. You may want to start with the back, the, these lower packs. Make sure they line up with the straps that are coming down, because it pretty much tells you where they go. Because the, the snap, the strap comes down, <laughs> connects with the bags, so you, so they pretty were clear where they would go. And then you would fit the backpacks, you know, above that with the blanket roll there. I mean, it's pretty clear. And then you would just put this uh, the mess tin, the dinner stuff with them and then you've got this cane which you could put on the back that's a alpine you know climbing stick for going up the mountains you could either add that on there or you could have him carrying that you could have it next to this other guy who's sitting on the box i mean that cane can go anywhere in your set and then there's the one rifle that you get uh which that guy's holding but again even that could be you know put differently in your set it doesn't matter it's a uh, history fans this is a Berthier carbine so that's what that is which is again used in both World War one and two so and there's the walking stick there a couple of ammo pouches so and there's your standard French Alpine soldier all right so I think we're out of time but anyhow Again, simple figure kits are fun, good to do with kids, and now you get yourself a little army you can work on. Okay, so hope to see you guys soon at the next model building workshop, okay? Bye now.